I am delighted to be here and to announce that, that EMA Scientific Committee met today and recommended a conditional marketing authorization in the EU for the vaccine developed by BioNTech and Pfizer. Welcome back to Take a Break. I'm Tim Stanovec in New York. Viruses mutate all the time, but a variant that emerged in Southeast England in September is causing particular concern. The World Health Organization's chief scientist says UK scientists are working with the WHO on the mutation, adding COVID may never be eradicated entirely. It's really important that we study the impact of these mutations, particularly when it starts becoming a dominant strain. We've seen this happen before with other strains where they arise and then they slowly take over and they become the dominant strain. Perhaps they have some advantage which allows them to spread. But I think the bottom line here is really that the interventions that are needed to prevent the spread, you know, regardless of which variant it is, are the same. And I think that's key and that's where we should be focusing while scientists are still doing the lab experiments to figure out what are the implications of this new variant. Does it really enhance transmissibility as has been suggested? Does it really uh, prevent antibodies from binding to the virus? And will it have any implications for vaccine efficacy? These are still questions that scientists are hopefully going to answer in the, in the coming days and weeks. How long will it take, uh, Dr. Samanathan, until we know this variant's response to the vaccines? I would say that it's going to take, you know, a couple of days, uh, if, if not a week or more, because there are several experiments that need to be run. And because this is... Uh, it's such an important question. It needs to be addressed properly. And we have to let the, you know, the science and the data drive us. Uh, so what needs to be done is experiments in the laboratory where this strain of virus is cultured and then it's exposed to neutralizing antibodies from people who have either had natural infection or people who've uh, received the vaccine in a clinical trial perhaps and who have antibodies that were you know, vaccine induced. And so when we do those experiments, then we will know whether we can actually neutralize the strain of uh, virus just like you neutralize any other strain of the virus. So we, we need to wait this, for those experiments to be done. Is this new variant unique to the United Kingdom? Well, it, the, the largest numbers of uh, genome sequences of this variant have been described from the United Kingdom. There have been some reports from other countries like uh, Denmark, uh, the Netherlands, I believe Australia has one case. But again, we need to keep in mind that the UK is probably sequencing much more, you know, than many countries. And so it's not really easy to compare. Similarly, South Africa, within the African continent, you know, there are huge disparities. South Africa does most of the genome sequencing on the continent. And therefore, they are describing a variant as well that's recently seemed to have become much more prominent. So again, a lesson is more countries need to do more sequencing and deposit it in the public databases that we have now for sequences like GISAID or, or the, uh, the, uh, G, uh, the Gen Bank and so on, so that scientists can actually compare, look across countries, and also look at the timelines of how these strains have been evolving. So yes, at the moment, most of these strains have been described from the UK, but I think we have to remember the caveats that I just mentioned, and perhaps if we look harder, we might find it in other countries as well. It's really important for us to keep track of the virus as it evolves, because it's so important for treatments and for prevention, for, for vaccines, for monoclonal antibodies, and so on. Um, and it's, it's very normal for a virus to behave like this, you know? So all viruses do. It's just that there's so much of focus and interest on this virus. I mean, the influenza virus mutates much more rapidly than, than the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and that's why every year, we have, to, um, we have to redo the strain selection for the flu vaccine for that particular year, and WHO coordinates that. So these are all possibilities in the future that we need to consider for this virus as well. But at the moment, I think there is no indication that either vaccines or treatments will not work. Mono, uh, viruses, as they come under pressure, you know, as you start using drugs and vaccines, viruses evolve to try to avoid those. So that's the natural evolution. But at this point in time, I don't think we have any evidence to suggest that the vaccines under development, or for that matter, the monoclonals, will not work for the majority of people.
The biggest stories the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.